Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today I'm going to start a new series called AWS Labs. The purpose for this is twofold. One is to get people prepared for their upcoming AWS certification exams. Number two is to help people get really familiarized with AWS concepts, the basic, the most foundational concepts about AWS, about cloud computing. And along the way, we'll explore different interesting and challenging projects from building simple static websites to use machine learning, all of the resources that AWS can offer to help us explore the wonderful technology world. If you want to learn AWS, just tag along with me, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. Let's start the journey. Okay, so the very first thing that we're going to do is to sign up for an AWS account. There is quite some misunderstanding about AWS. So number one misunderstanding is that, is there a monthly charge if I just sign up for an AWS account? No, there's absolutely none as far as I know. Number two is that, how do they charge me? Even if I stop my EC2 instances, is AWS going to charge me? The answer is no. So rest assured, AWS is pay as you go. That's actually one of the greatest benefits about migrating everything to AWS, to the cloud, right? You don't need to buy machines upfront. There is a heavy upfront cost if you just invest in-house, right? Instead, if you can start with AWS, you only pay for the resources that you actually use. If you turn the EC2 machines off, then you're not going to be built for anything. The third thing that I want to briefly touch point on is that there is a lot of services, almost all services, the AWS offers a free tier, which is very good enough for you to explore and to understand the service for people to help themselves get familiarized with AWS services. AWS free tier is more than enough to get your hands dirty without paying a penny, right? That's awesome. All right, now let's get started. So the very first thing that we're going to do is that we'll sign up for an AWS account. Let's get started with our AWS journey. Create an AWS account, email address. You just uh, provide your email address and sign up for a password. And account name, demo. I'll call it Steam demo, continue. And this is a professional account, that's correct. Text message. So it's going to ask you for your phone number. So provide your phone number and then they'll send you a code. Then your identity has been verified successfully. Let's continue. So we'll just choose the free plan. As for most of us, we want to explore first when learning AWS. So let's be frugal. Okay, now we have signed up and an account. My role is, let's see, developer. Um, software developer engineer. I am interested in select area. Hmm, I am interested in everything. I'll just leave it blank. Let's hit submit. Thank you. So the next thing that we can do is that we can sign into the console. Let's just explore. Next. All right, we're logging in. So this is the AWS console, the very famous console. So you can explore all of the different services that AWS has to offer. So you, um, all of these beautiful, amazing services, the most famous ones like EC2, S3, let's see, where is the EMR, Athena, CloudTrail, OpsWorks, Elastic Transcoder, and where is SQS? Let's look for SQS. SQS, where is it? Yes, simple queues, simple queue service is here, which is, which is the earliest service, the the earliest service that has been launched by AWS. S3 is the second one. Okay, what we have done is that we have created an AWS account. Now, next step is, of course, we can navigate around console, right? That this is totally fine. We can navigate around console, but how can we programmatically control and interact with AWS resources? We want to install AWS CLI. That's our next step, CLI, install. So I'm using a Mac. Your mileage may vary if you use a Windows or Linux, just follow along the different version of the AWS tutorial. Install the, just so just Google AWS CLI install, then you can find CLI version one. That's, since version two is the most recent one, so I just go, go ahead and install version two. Again, I'm, 
I'm running on my Mac. So if you're running on Linux or Windows, just follow along for the different version of this tutorial. So for the purpose of demo, I'm going to pick Mac OS. Prerequisites. As long as your Mac OS is not that old, it's totally fine. Install the Mac OS. Um, using their multiple ways, you can either use the macOS GUI graphical interface. I'm more of a command line person, so I'd like to do it through my terminal, through command line. Quite pseudo, of course, I'm the owner of the Mac, so that's fine. Uh, for the current user only, no, we won't do that. Then we're just going to install for all users using the macOS command line. Okay, these two uh, command uh, these two commands, we'll execute them one after another. So first, we'll run this call command here. Uh, first, we we'll run this call command. It's basically downloading the AWS CLI from the internet. Okay, that's first. Mm, and then the second, we're going to run the standard macOS installer program, which is going to help us install the .pkg file on our Mac. Right, copy that, run this, password. Package name is AWS CLI, upgrading at base path, it's running, okay. Now it's successful, then we can take a look here, you can view the de debug, debug logs after, install, after installing, okay, let's see, var log install log, let's take a look here, yes, confirm installation, we run this, which AWS, okay, it's using local Bing AWS, which matches here, and then we'll see AWS version. What's our AWS version here? Hmm. Okay, this is our version down in 1930. Small advanced version. All right, that's it for installing AWS CLI on your Mac. Next step is that we can set up the credentials so that we can use the command line tools to interact with AWS services. So first, what we want to do is that we want to set up the access key and secret key. How can we do that? So first, uh, we can export that first. So if you click your username, then there is this drop-down menu shows up. Then you want to click My Security Credentials. So here, once it's loaded up, you can see there is password, MFA, access key and secret key. The, the third one is our option, is something that we are looking for. Right now, I don't have anything here, which is a good thing because See, there's a warning box here. It says, root user access keys provide unrestricted access to your entire AWS account. If you need long-term access keys, we recommend creating an IAM user with limited permissions and generating access keys for that user instead. So we're not going to go ahead and just simply create this button. It's going to be super easy, but at the same time, it's, it's going to create a vulnerability for us. It's because it's not the best practice to use root user, which basically is the ultimate user that can do anything, which is not a good practice. So we're not going to just go ahead and create new access key by creating the button here. What we're going to do is we'll just go to IAM. See here on the left side, there is this panel. What we're going to do is that create a new IAM user as they recommend, right? As AWS recommends, we're going to create a new IAM user, see user here. So we'll create a new user, say Steve, Steve Dev. Dev. All right, we'll allow both programmatic access, which means we, we will generate both access key and secret key. And then we also want AWS Management Console access, which is what we want as well. We'll just let it auto-generate password and then Next step, we'll just hit permission. Attach, well, we'll do attach existing policy. For right now, it's only me. So I'm just going to hit administrator access. That's it. Now next, we'll hit text. We'll just leave this one blank. But you can add text if you want. For example, create, give it a name or something. Then create a user. So now this user is created. So you see here and now we have access key and secret key. This is something that we need in order to set up our AWS CLI command line interfaces to properly interact with our account, with our AWS resources, right? Now let's go back to the terminal. What's going to happen if we try 
AWS S3, say AWS S3 LS at this moment, what's going to happen? It's, it doesn't know anything, right? It doesn't know how to interact or like say, if you're just a random person that knocks on my door, am I going to open my door for you? Unless you answer the security questions correct so that I know you are someone that I can trust, right? At that moment, I can open my door and physically authenticate you and then authorize you to do things that you are authorized to do, right? How can we do that? As it suggests, right? Unable to locate credentials. So you need the credentials. It's basically the key to authenticate yourself and then you get authorized to do whatever actions that you plan to do. You can configure credentials by running AWS Configure. So we'll run this and also we'll give it a profile name. I'll just call it Steve Dev here. Then you copy over your access key and then you also copy over your secret key, right? You copy it over here and then later on there is it's ask it's going to ask you to set up the default region and the default format. You can just leave those two as blank. That's totally fine. After setting up your credentials this way using AWS Configure and giving it a profile name, that's optional. You can give it a profile name or not. Now let's run this again. AWS S3 LS stands for list, which is which is just going to list out all of the buckets that I have in my S3 folder. What's going to happen? It's going to work. Yes, I have two buckets in my AWS account. If you just go to AWS S3, it has it lists these two buckets, right? Of course, you can create a bucket this way, but the more preferable way that I do is AWS S3 make bucket. You make a new bucket in this way, right? Say I can just call this. I can make a new bucket. I'll just call it Steve Demo Bucket Three with my profile region is US West Two. Yeah, a new bucket is made. How can I view the status of what, of all of the buckets that I have in my root folder? Is S3 LS. List again. See how many buckets do I have? I have three now, right? Instead of two. Previously, I have only two. But now, using this command, mb make bucket, I made a new bucket called bucket three, right? So right now, it's still showing two, but we can refresh the refresh the page. And I'm just manually refreshing. Okay, now you see there are three buckets here. This is just a um, how you can interact with uh, your AWS services resources through the AWS CLI. That's it for today's uh, AWS lab. Just to get us started to sign up for an AWS account and then we can set up AWS credentials, access key, secret key to set up your AWS CLI so that you can either interact with your AWS services through AWS console or the preferable way that I prefer is to interact with AWS through your AWS CLI. Again, before we wrap up, just a couple things to call out. Again, you don't need to pay anything to AWS. If you just create an account, there is no monthly fee or uh, subscription fee, nothing like that. That's actually, again, the one of the greatest benefits of moving to the cloud is that the payment model is pay as you go, pay as you use. If you don't use anything, you pay nothing, right? So don't worry about the cost. And the second thing is that AWS offers a wide range of free tier services. Let's search for free tier. Free tier is it, most of the services, for example, EC2, it offers a free EC2 instance for which, whichever the compute hours that you use. And for S3, there's also a threshold. As long as you work and run compute within the free tier threshold, you're not going to be charged with anything which is good enough for us to play around with things and to get familiar with the AWS offerings, to get prepared for the AWS certification or just get yourself familiarized and understand AWS concepts. So this is really, really good. Um, that's it for today's video. If you feel you learned something from this video, please do me a favor and hit the like button and don't subscribe to my channel as we continue to go through AWS tutorials. I'll see you guys in the next one.